Native. I'm John Kane, and I welcome you to Let's Talk Native on this Saturday, April 6th. While this program may not provide a path to spiritual enlightenment, we do attempt to promote, or in some cases, start a conversation. We don't do prayers, and we don't do Buffalo speeches. We take a tough look at our history, oppression, and survival. We talk about culture, the arts, politics, and identity. And we may step on a few toes along the way, but our real goal here is to bring people together by breaking down what separates us. We will take on the false narratives and provide critical thinking to all that is being heaped upon us. And we do it all live right here from the Cattaraugus Territory of the Seneca Nation. So let's talk native. But first, let me remind people that our shows um, uh, stream, our audio of our, our shows stream live at www.letstalknative.com. We stream video of the show on Facebook Live, and then we take the audio and the video, and we post them up later up uh, later on on SoundCloud, uh, and of course on uh, all of the available podcast platforms, and we take the video, as I said, we post it up on our YouTube channel, which is Let's Talk Native TV. I encourage you to subscribe to our podcast or to our YouTube channel or both, and um, then you'll, you'll have an opportunity to catch not only the shows that we do here, but uh, but sometimes we do with smaller, shorter videos that are more specific uh, to a, a particular subject. I am the host of Let's Talk Native, and I am assisted by Jake Proud uh, here in studio, who is managing our video and our sound. All right. Well, I don't usually do a show that is related to a, um, a, to a show that I did. To, I don't do this show um, as it relates to my show in New York, but I got to. I mean, I posted it up on the promo. I had a caller this week who said, Hey, are you doing another Kill Whitey program? You know, and so that was, you know, George from New Jersey who called in, who who wanted to know if we were doing another Kill Whitey show. And, of course, I wasn't doing a Kill Whitey show, but I was raising uh, uh, issues about race and racism and the normalization of race and uh, racism. Specifically, what I talked about is something that's been a little bit of a buzz around here, especially down in Allegheny, um, which was a, a Pat Buchanan uh, um, op-ed or, or, or opinion piece, a column that he writes. And he's his column is carried in the Jamestown Post-Journal, so it's a fairly local paper. So there, Pat Buchanan has a, has a column in there, and I'm going to read some bits of it, that it, they, it, 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 it's almost absurd some of the things that he, that he asks. That he, that he writes the column as if he's posing a question where there's only one logical answer, and that's his answer, which, which involves justification of, of slaughter, massacres, genocide, um, and everything else. Because if you don't know who Pat Buchanan is, he is an evangelical Christian. Uh, he is a right-wing conservative, actually ran for president, and, uh, and obviously he has a following. He has a following enough that, that a, you know, even a local paper, paper is willing to pay to, to carry his column in, in their uh, in their newspaper, and you know, and I say this all the time. Most people don't realize, and, and maybe most Native people don't even realize, but most of them don't realize that surrounding every Native territory, and this goes almost across the board: U.S., Canada, either side of the um, you know that imaginary line, um, East Coast, West Coast. The our immediate surroundings are usually pretty filled with rednecks. I mean, it's pretty much con- filled with, with the conservative right. So even in a state like New York that is considered a, um, a blue state, it, um, here in western New York, you can go to every village around Cattaraugus or Allegheny, and in fact, sometimes even inside, um, and you'll see a, a, somebody flying a, a rebel flag, a, a Confederate flag. You might even see a Nazi flag. And you're certainly going to see a whole lot of pro-Trump uh, folks. Now, and I want to be clear, as I've said you know, many times over, racism isn't a right thing. It's a white thing. But you probably got a higher percentage of racists on the right than you do on the left. And again, the, the right does not have a monopoly on racism, and I'll get into that a little bit. But you know, I want to go through a little bit of what Pat Buchanan's um, uh, opinion piece was all about. And part of the reason, because just like with Trump and and so many other, you know, Fox News, uh, there's such a normalization uh, process going on to normalize racism that we have to bat it down. And I want to be clear. 
I don't think all white people are racist, and I'm not, and I don't hate white people. But I gotta tell you, racism has found its home, and 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 it comes from the that dominant uh, culture that has been a part of colonization, imperialism, all all that other stuff, and and so and that's white people, folks. So as much as there may be racial bias that exists for all people who you know recognize themselves as as, as a distinct race, racism, which is about power and control. And about supremacy, about looking at yourself as the superior um, people. And, and, and look, and whether you think that you're superior just by virtue of the religion that you practice or the, um, the culture that you think you can claim or simply the color of your skin or genetic, if you think it's genetic, that's racism. But any of that notion of supremacy, I mean, you know, I, I talk about it all the time because even in the, you know, the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, I realize that this is not, um, you know, an answer to all problems, but I'll, I'll read it again. And this is, uh, uh, this is something that the entire world um, agreed upon in 2007, with the exception of four nations that voted against it, United States, Canada, uh, New Zealand, and Australia, who, who now have kind of softened their stands on it. But, but let's be clear, this isn't just about racism. This is about the, the idea of advocating superiority over other people. This is affirming. This is, again, the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. It is the third affirmation uh, in the preamble of the agreement, and it says, affirming further that all doctrines, policies, and practices based on or advocating superiority of peoples or individuals on the basis of national origin or racial, religious, ethnic, or cultural differences are racist, scientifically false, legally invalid, morally condemnable, and social, socially unjust. So, of course, this is 2007, but I'll get into a little bit more of the origin of that condemnation of this kind of superiority and, and genocide uh, as, as I get into, as we go along. But uh, let me uh, pull up here. I've got it, I, I've got it saved on my, uh, on my phone here. Um, this is just a, a portion, and you can go to... Look, look up Pat Buchanan um, online. He's got his own page that lists all of his columns. And, and you know, and in fact, one of the, what's the name of the column? It says, uh, must we, um, must the West beg the world for forgiveness? And that's Pat Buchanan. And uh, I don't know what day. Oh, this is March 29th. So um, that's when, it, uh, when he wrote it. I'm not, not exactly sure what, what day it appeared in the Jamestown paper, but um you know, and I, I don't want to dignify all of his comments. I mean, be, but it's important to know what a what the evangelical right. And keep in mind, we're always told, well, you know, that's that church stuff doesn't really matter. Well, this guy is get gets play. I mean, this guy is on television. I mean, he you know he gets a major play on on things like you know what what presidential candidate he endorses, um, and that's of course he's run he's run for president himself. Um, but I want to let me just read a few pieces of, of what he what he wrote. And, and it begins um, it begins with his condemnation about the president of Mexico, um, what, they're, what they're saying was a demand uh, for Spain to apologize for the Spanish conquest of Mexico that began 500 years ago. And and of course, he also ties into this, the you know, the 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 conversation happening within the Democratic Party. Uh, over reparations for slavery uh, doesn't really mention native people specifically, but obviously that's what lies at the basis of what what Spain is uh, is talking about here. But anyway, guys, no one denies that great sins and crimes were committed in that conquest. I mean, the Spanish conquest of Mexico. But are not the Mexican people, 130 million of them, far better off because because the Spanish came and overthrew the Aztec Empire? And I'll keep going. I can ask, answer each one of these questions as I go along, but I'll keep going. Did not 300 years of Spanish rule and replacement of Mexico's pagan cultures or pagan cults with, uh, with the Catholic faith lead to enormous advances in civilization and human rights? Or is there never a justification for one nation to invade another, conquer its people, impose its rule, and uproot and replace its culture and civilization? Is a is cultural genocide? Which, there's no such thing as cultural genocide. There's just genocide. So is genocide always a crime against humanity? 
even if the uprooted culture countenanced human sacrifice, man, I just want to stop there. But I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Did the Aztecs have a right to be left alone by the European world? If so, whence came that right? Who says whence? Whence, <laughs> whence came that right? Which leads to another question. Are all civilizations and cultures equal? Are some more equal than others? Well, how could something be more equal than something else? That's a stupid thing. Or are some superior? And then he goes on. Before recent decades, most Americans were taught to believe the West stood above all other civilizations. And America was its supreme manifestation. And much of the world seemed to agree. As for the uh, assertion that all civilizations and cultures are equal, that is an ideological statement. But where's, where is the history, the scientific empirical evidence uh, to support that, that proposition? How many people really believe that? Well, that's a good question. Have the Western peoples who conquered and changed much of the world been on balance a blessing to mankind or a curse? Is the history of the West, though replete with failings of all civilizations, yeah, no worse than anybody else, not unique? in the greatness of what it produced? Or the West crimes of imperialism, colonialism, genocide, racism, slavery, and maltreatment of minorities of color so sweeping, hateful, and shameful that they cancel out the good done? Is the white race, as Susan Sontag wrote, the cancer of human history? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they they pretty much are. And, and it's not to say that all white people, but the, this idea that the white race is superior, that has created a cancer on the entire world. And, and if we want to go through this, I mean, want to go through this? No, there is no evidence to suggest that, 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 Spain, that Mexicans are better off. And when you got to throw the number 130 million out there, let's keep in mind, there's 130 million, 127 million uh, citizens of, uh, of the, the nation of Mexico today. But the native population was obliterated. It was destroyed. It, w- it was wiped out. I mean, by some estimates, between 95 and 98% of the indigenous populations of North America, you know, and, and the same can be said for, South, uh, you know, for Central America, but North America, including Mexico. Keep in mind, Mexico is North America, folks, as is Canada, as is the United States. But between 95 and 98% of the population was wiped out by, by Spain by Great Britain, by France, by Dutch, by, by everybody, you know, everybody who came here. And it wasn't just done because we, we couldn't handle the diseases that uh, the Europeans had uh, developed resistance from or for. No, that, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a lie. Much of it was done by destroying a people, um, a, a way of life, uh, by murder, massacre, genocide, um, by by starvation, all kinds of things, and it was done in the name of the church. Which I mean, which you know, and you know, so when when I say I don't get it, I don't get how we can have native people so devoutly committed to a church that even now one of its voices, one of its one of its pastors, Pat Buchanan, will stand up and say, "Is is genocide really?" A crime against uh, humanity? Yes, it is. It is. And and then to ask the question: Did Spanish did not Spanish rule lead to advances in civilization? No, it didn't. Spanish rule did not provide civilization to the population that they wiped out. That's absurd. It's absurd to suggest that killing people provided something for them. I mean, if you're going to say, "Oh, the, the few that remained." The ones who could survive genocide, and and again, genocide is murder. It is stealing children. It is doing all of these things. But it's also creating the conditions that that a people cease to exist as the people they once were. It's a crime. It's it's a it's a war crime. It is a crime against humanity. And you know what? It isn't a crime against humanity because people of color said it was. So. When he asked that question, you know, is there is genocide always a crime against humanity? Yes, it is. And you know when it became that? At the birthplace of the word genocide. 
And in fact, before it was called genocide, it was called denationalization. We can go back over, over 100 years ago. This was the conversation that was taking place where? In Europe. This was the conversation that was taking place at the world stage as, international, as, as, as nations were coming together to say, what can we do to create world peace? Well, one of the, one of the things that was pointed out was that this idea of, of stripping away a, a, uh, any people's national character and then imposing somebody else's national character is a war crime. That's what it was called in 1913, over 100 years ago. So Pat Buchanan standing up and saying, well, is it really? I mean, does everybody really believe that, you know, eliminating, wiping out a culture, especially if it's one that supported human sacrifice? Well, well can I remind you that Christianity is laced with human sacrifice? You know that thing with the flood? Look, if you believe any of that crap, God killed, killed off the, almost the entire population of the planet. If you believe it, as, as, as it's laid out in the Bible, that's human sacrifice for the greater good of what? Noah and, and, the, and the incestuous family, family that he would produce? Because if you killed everybody, I don't know who his kids had kids with. And that's, that's another dirty story I don't want to get into. I don't want to, I didn't want to Im- uh, create the images of that. They had an awful lot of animals on that boat, too. So I didn't want to think about what that was going on there either. So, and of course, you have um, you know Abraham, God telling Abraham to kill his own son, human sacrifice. Jesus Christ was a human sacrifice. So you're going to sit there and condemn the the Aztecs for human sacrifice? You folks were killing, you, you were burning women that you thought were witches. I mean, the, your, your, the whole idea of what you what you insist is proper punishment for crimes that weren't even crimes. Lynching black people. Uh, look, you look at what what Columbus and his men did to those uh, to the native people that they first encountered. They were crucifying them, just like Jesus Christ. They were burning them. They were hanging them, and then putting a fire underneath their feet. That's what they were doing. They were sacrificing. They were. I mean, this wasn't just murder. They did it as almost some sort of sacrilege. I mean, or or, or some kind of um, holy uh, sacrament. The way they were actually murdering people, they would murder them 13 at a time like like the apostles. I mean, this is what was being done. So to listen to this white man stand up there and say, oh, of course you could wipe out a culture that that practiced some of these, these ridiculous barbaric traits like human sacrifice. Look, I'm not advocating human sacrifice. You know, that wasn't a whole different show anything. If the Aztecs did it, I'm not that familiar with their culture to suggest that... Um, you know that that's what they did. I mean, uh, you know, I've I've heard that, <laughs> but I, you know, I don't look. I, I don't pretend to be an expert in their culture, but I'll tell you, this is one of those things that, as people call, it's interesting because as you listen to Pat Buchanan suggest that th- that this was a civilization that needed to be wiped out, and yet we're talking pyramids, we're talking about all these advances that, you know, these human achievements that the Aztecs and the Incas and the Mayans, uh, you know, accomplished. And yet, when you look at what they, what, what they would parallel as an advanced civilization, it came with some of these other things, like, you know, like, like some of this ridiculous religious beliefs, including things like human sacrifice. I mean, so when I hear... <laughs> This guy asks this question, and, and in, a, in a local paper, no less, and, and I don't know who, what other newspapers carry this, carry this column, but he's asking this across the board, and this guy has people listening to him. He, he has people reading this. So when he asks the question, yeah, is genocide always a, a crime against humanity? Yes, it is. And it has been so. In 1913 is when this conversation began about denationalization. When uh, when uh, Carl Lemkin would uh, um, Lemkin would uh, develop the word genocide, and and to take the idea of denationalization to another level, it was no longer called denationalization; it was called genocide. And genocide, by now we're talking 1945, it was considered a a crime against humanity, one that could be prosecuted in world courts. And yet you've got a religious leader in the United States saying, "Yeah, but you know." Some genocide is okay. As long as it's white people committing it against brown people, it's okay. As long as when you look at the people, 
and consider them inferior, then it's okay. See, this is the whole white supremacy thing because it's tied to not only their see, see they tie their their culture to them to their genetics although it's not i mean white people were, were did the same thing to their own white people too i mean let, let's face it i mean when you, when you think about what what christianity did to all of europe in in terms of wiping out any other belief systems i mean that's they did they did it to their own as well but i mean i, I think it's it's important that people realize so when the caller calls me in, in New York, and, and look, I had some really good callers that called in, and but this guy calls in because I'm talking about Pat Buchanan's column, and the and and the concern isn't Pat Buchanan. I don't care about changing Pat Buchanan's mind, but when this guy calls and says, "Well, are you doing another show on killing Whitey?" because he listens to my program, and obviously I get under his skin a little bit, and 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 you see when you look at when you consider what white supremacy is, white supremacy is this belief that you are a superior being based on um, on the fact that you're white. And that was a, a very commonly held, in fact, universally held uh, belief amongst white people for, many, for, for several centuries. What gets born out of that is creating a system that, 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 is set to to give white men especially an advantage. That's called white privilege. But the thing about white privilege, because now you're not saying now you're not even talking about that you are a superior being. Now you're saying, well, you the fact that we believed that at one time has left us with a with a privilege. The thing about privilege is it can go away. Privilege is not the same thing as a white as a right. White, <laughs> white and right. See how that goes. Yeah, I mean, privilege is is. is it's something that they can leave, lose. So if you all of a sudden get to that place where you're afraid your privilege can slip away, it turns. So now you've gone from white supremacy to white privilege. The next step is called white fragility. That's when a white man calls up on, onto my show and says, are you talking about killing whitey? Because the very, the very idea of talking about racism or racist dogma threaten, is threatening to white people, some people. Now look, if you are a if you're a white person and you don't you don't buy into into Pat Buchanan's, you know, bullshit, well then I then I applaud you. I mean, it shouldn't have been a heavy lift to 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 come to that conclusion, but if you are, I'm I'm glad you you've come to that conclusion. But if you're on the fence, you've got to know some of the stuff that I'm talking about. And that's you're the ones I'm talking to. Because I know we have I know we have white allies. I know we have some white people who think they're allies until they get to a certain place where all of a sudden, uh, you know, I like brown people, but I sh- sure don't want them in my neighborhood. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, oh, I think Native people are great. I love their culture. I love their spirituality. Uh, but I don't want my, you know, I don't really want them living next to me. Or I don't, you know, I, I don't think that they should have the same rights as me. So, I mean, many people who, who are very strong advocates, you know, against, you know, or, or, or you know, proponents for, against racism, uh, they can find themselves at, at a place in, in the road that, yeah, that they're not quite willing to, to go. And especially, many people are challenged when they are presented with an opportunity to speak out about it. And, and look, and I get it. These, these sometimes are your parents or your grandparents or your the guys that you ride motorcycles with or the people you go to church with. When, when you're presented with the opportunity to say, you know, that's not quite right what you said. Many of you will remain silent. And yet, some of you are our allies or claim to be. So, look, I want to push some of you to have a more meaningful conversation. And I'm not saying you got to kill Whitey. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it's 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 time to step up a little bit. And for those of you on the fence, if you're swayed by a moron in the White House or in Congress or in the Senate or on a Supreme Court or or a guy who gets to write a column or, or Fox News, I mean, if, if you're swayed by these guys, then maybe you need some more information run your way. Look, we're at the bottom of the hour. We'll take a break here and we'll come back. But. Look, I, I, I'm just saying, folks, you don't have to allow a few individuals and some of this, what many people would love to call 
a fringe belief system normalize racism. We just we sh- just shouldn't let it happen. All right, we'll take a break. This is John Kane. This is Let's Talk Native. We'll be right back. Thanks for coming back. This is John Kane. This is Let's Talk Native. I want to thank our sponsors. Let's Talk Native is sponsored by Ross and Holly John in the uh, in the RGE uh, family of businesses, Eric White and ERW Enterprises, um, and a few others who make contributions from time to time, and and some who uh, contribute on a regular basis that uh, eh, just don't want to brag about it. So, uh, but look, I, I want to thank all of you who who make contributions, especially those who do it regularly. Um, but but even those who do it from time to time, I it, it helps. It helps us do what we do. We're entering our 10th year of Let's Talk Native. And, uh, you know, that's a long time. That's a long time for, you know, essentially for just a few of us to to bang out a show uh, like this. And, uh, you know, and it's not because we're going to run out of material because there's always going to be some Pat Buchanan or some Donald Trump or, you know, or some judge ruling one way or another on a case. And I've got a few that are, that I'll save uh, coming down the line here as it relates to gaming, uh, some, some, some recent developments, but uh, I'm not going to do that this show. But I do want to say I am grateful for those who uh, support the show. I'm also um, grateful to those of you who share the podcast, the the videos, uh, share the uh, the Facebook live stream, including my wife who shares uh, the the live stream to a bunch of group pages. And of course, I want to thank those of you who uh, are administrators to those group pages who allow us to put our uh, our show on your on your pages. Uh, look, I know it can be a little redundant, and you know I I know some people have share have some of the same group pages I do, and they're saying, "Wow, the guys on all these things." Well, look, you know, just give give one of them a look. You don't have to watch them on every page. <laughs> it's the same show, but uh, but give it a give it a look and offer a comment. I I'd love to engage you um, in in these conversations. That's the reason. We do this show. We do this show to encourage a conversation. 
And you, and if you if you're not familiar with the, some of this information, it's important that people know what this information. You know, again, getting back to um uh, to Pat Buchanan again, he, he keeps talking about conquest. That brings me back to a, a couple of shows ago when when I made it real clear that native people weren't conquered in the way that people think they were. I mean. You had a Supreme Court justice in Justice John Marshall in 1823, rules in, the, in this case, Johnson v. McIntosh, codifies into law this racist doctrine, church doctrine, that people refer to as the doctrine of Christian discovery. But he actually takes it a step farther. So beyond this idea that discovery entitled people to, um, uh, to land title and, and dominion over the land, he also suggests that discovery was the same thing as conquest. And he refers to it as an, as an extravagant pretension. And the logic that jo- Justice John Marshall puts into law, that is, becomes a, a logic that, that stays with the whole legal system. The logic is, if you can assert even something that is ex- uh, 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 extravagantly pretentious, like this notion that discovery and conquest are the same thing, if you can assert it from the beginning, and then sustain that assertion and then start to build on that, like build communities, then you can make it true. No matter how much of a hoax it is, no matter how much bullshit it is, you can make it true and you can make it law. Uh, maybe you never quite make it true, but you can make it law. And that's what he says. If you can assert it from the beginning and assert it and, and sustain it, then it can become law and it does become law. And there's a thing in, in the um, – and you, you see it every time there's a Supreme Court nominee, uh, nomination process. They talk about, well, is the new judge going to try to overturn you know, established uh, law, precedent, as they call it? And the, the, the term they refer to, this, this idea of precedent, a, you know, a court ruling that will, will stand, is called stare decisis, settled law, you know, established – Law that, that will withstand, a decision that will stand, stare decisis, that's what, it, that's what it means. That is what Justice John Marshall was saying in 1823. If you can make it, if, if, if you're going to assert it and sustain it, then it becomes established law, and then it stands. And it can't, in, in fact, his final comment on that, on, on, on that part of his uh, decision was that it becomes law, and it cannot be questioned. It can never be questioned. Starry decisis. Now, <laughs> the interesting thing, this is this, this notion that if you can, if something can, can exist for a long enough period of time, that this, it's, it's this notion of past practice. Okay, w- this is what we did. We, we claimed that, uh, that discovery was the same as, um, uh, as conquest. And once we asserted that, um, that was the the practice that we that we adopted and and we used it forever. The funny thing is, and and this kind of came to me later when I think about these two white guys on the on the arbitration panel that ruled against the Senecas, even though there's no language in the in the compact that said that the uh, revenue sharing should go past 14 years, they they use this concept again of past practices, just like John Marshall, right? Look, you did it for 14 years, so. That's what you got to, even though there's no justification for it, even though it was a bit of a hoax, even though it's a bit of a, it's a, an, it's a, an extravagant pretension that we're going to impose this fee on you. We did it to you for 14 years, so we're going to c- continue to do it for another seven. I mean, it's amazing to me when, I, and, and when we talk about the doctrine of Christian discovery and all of this stuff, a lot of times people say, oh, that's old stuff. No, it comes current. It, it, it. It repeats itself over and over again. This is a, this is a ruling back at the beginning of the year. This is a this this ruling came in January. So don't tell me these ancient concepts are irrelevant today, or that we should just get over it. Look, I don't care about a, an apology from you know. Uh, I mean, I'm not Mexican, I guess. So I mean, I don't care about an apology from anybody. I'm, the, the the Hawaiians got an apology. They, they actually passed a, a joint resolution of Congress apologizing for what the United States did to Hawaii. You know what that apology was worth? Nothing. In fact, the Supreme Court says, oh, you can't use that apology as any any grounds for any case, any uh, any claim. No, no, that that's those those have no legal merit. <laughs> so, 
So you could give your apology. And and this notion that that um, Buchanan is asking, are all cultures equal? Look, I don't know what, how do you say something's equal? I mean, just two equal two, yes. But equal, I mean, that isn't even a, a word that applies to this stuff. I mean, I mean to, to suggest that two cultures are equal, that, that's like saying are they the same. No, all cultures, cultures aren't the same. Are some better than others? Well, that's in the eyes of the beholder, I guess. But when you ask the question, where does the right to exist come from? I mean, he asks, he says, you know, do the, did the Aztecs have a right to be left alone? And where does that right come from? I'll tell you where the right comes from. Creation. The, the very idea that we, our right to exist comes from the fact that the powers of creation allowed us to exist. And, and, the, and the powers of creation go beyond just, it, it gives us all whatever power we have to carry ourselves. And, and if, and if carrying ourselves involves developing the, our cultural distinctions, that's the right that we have. It's a right bestowed by, it's a birthright. It's not a, I mean, it, look, in spite of what was ruled, you know, what, what was developed in 1913 and then confirmed in 1945 about genocide being a war crime, I didn't need a bunch of white men in Europe who were killing each other to come up with this, these concepts to know that I have a right to exist. I mean, I mean, it, it, and for, for Pat Buchanan to ask this question, well, who says some people have a right to have their own culture? Wait a second. Did he ask that question? And, and, and again, I got to go back to, to some of you white folks here. You have to understand that he's trying to normalize doubt in your mind that maybe this whole idea of maybe racism is okay. Sure, it's okay. It's okay to look down at people and say, no, you are an inferior people. Your culture was inferior. And the fact that we wiped out your ancestors to the tune of 95 to 98% of them, it was worth it. It was worth it because, you know, and what, what, what he tries to do is he plays his number game, right? Well, 130 million Mexicans. Surely they have benefited. There wasn't 130 million Mexicans that survived this genocide. You know where the 130 comes from? 130 million? I'll tell you where it comes from. It's the same reason that, you know, that there's, I mean, where did all the black people in the United States come from? You know what? They didn't all come from Africa. Honestly, it was probably less than a half a million um, uh, captives that came to North, to North America, specifically, in the form of slavery. The rest of them, the, the rest of black folks were subject of rape, you know, slavery, breeding in captivity. But rape is a big part of it. I'll tell you, you know, it, not every mixed blood native person or black person you see, it wasn't just about falling in love. I mean, did, did Thomas Jefferson love Sally Hemings? <laughs> no, he had a sex slave. So when you look at the population of brown people, and and understand that they've been indoctrinated with with you know with in you know in Mexico's case Catholicism and so many other uh, of the, of these uh, Christian denominations, but they were beaten, they were raped. I mean, you've got people looking the other way on uh, time and time again on priests raping little boys, and 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 some and, and little girls for that matter. Nuns being raped. You're going to ignore all that stuff because it's the church. The Baptists are going through the same thing. Every denomination. The residential schools, it was a breeding ground for sexual predators wearing black robes. Yeah. And so when I hear one of these evangelicals get up there and, and, and raise the question, and he's not raising it for us. He's raising it for some of you white folks out there. He wants some of you white folks to think, look, I'm a man of, I'm, I'm a man of, Christ, I'm a Christian. You know, I'm a, you know, I, you know, I'm a certified re- uh, uh, preacher. I'm a man of the cloth, and if I tell you that that genocide is not always a war crime, it's not always a crime against humanity. That some cultures deserved 
to be wiped out. Some people deserved to be victims of genocide. There's some of you who are saying, there, somebody finally said it. I mean, that's what people say about Trump. Well, you know, what I like about Trump, he really says what he means. No, he says what you hoped he would say. Now, look, again, I'm not, this, is, this isn't a Kill Whitey show. And I'm not even suggesting, you know, you know, kill redneck Whitey. I'm not even suggesting that. What I'm saying is that some of you who know, really do know in your hearts, right from wrong, if you're looking for justification, and that's what Pat Buchanan's trying to do here. He's looking for justification to say why the white Christian man is the superior uh, you know, person on the planet. You know, and of course, he's got all kinds of other absurd things. But you know what? The Jamestown paper is willing to print that crap. Fox News is willing to put that stuff on TV every time, every day. And you know what? <laughs> he's advocating the fact that the Catholic Church did all this stuff. You got a Catholic governor in, the, in, uh, in Albany. And you got a whole lot of Catholics around here in Western New York. Where do they draw the line? Do they only draw the line? Some of them, and not all of them. Some of them. When when it turns out their priest is a, is a homosexual pedophile, because that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of you know this idea of the other, the hom homosexuality. That's not even the problem. Look, if priests want to have sex with each other, that's up to them. But the idea of uh, of you know of using your religion to justify Heinous acts like genocide, like pedophilia. That's what th that is. What Spain brought to uh, to the New World, <laughs> not new to us, new to them. And that is what Great Britain, France, you know, Holland, you know, Germany, Portugal, and the and 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 the, the white people who would uh, would be uh, you know the children of that. You know, so the United States. The United States has committed some of the worst atrocities. And look, I don't want your apology. Don't beg me for I don't believe in forgiveness. And I'm not even an advocate for reparations. But don't deny our right to exist as a free and independent people. That's, that's not even an ask. That's an, an insistence. So look... You know, to those of you who are who are who are native, who are listening to the program, and again, I say I said it before, this program is for you. You need to know that that's what some of these folks are harboring, and you have to be equipped to say, no, there's never a justification for for genocide, and it's not because we said so. Your own people have been saying it for a hundred years, for over a hundred years. You've known that that it is a crime against humanity to strip away somebody's national character to strip away their culture and, and, and impose another view, another religion, another government, another nationality. And we're still going through that today. So don't tell me to get over what took place 100 years ago. We are still having the United States trying to impose its nationality upon us. They do it over, over uh, passport issues. You know, and look, there are, there are some people who are afraid to call that out for what it is. There are some people who are afraid to take on the state, even as they're screwing you, not over taxes, but, but, but that too. The Senecas I mean, were, have been taken for a billion and a half dollars, and, are, and they're going to be, if the state has their way, they'll take them for another billion. We have a right to stand up to this stuff. And yes, racism is abound. And it isn't just Pat Buchanan on the right. It's, it's folks like Mar uh, Andrew Cuomo on the left. Paul Deister, a Democrat in, in Niagara Falls. This notion of white supremacy isn't just, again, the evangelicals don't have a monopoly on that. The, the, the Republicans don't have a, a monopoly on that. White supremacy, it's a white thing. White privilege, it's a white thing. White fragility, it's a white thing. Now, we all 
have a certain level of fear and fragility and concern about our identities, our, our who we are, our people. But there's also some of us who have, have, have bigger fears. Fears about, again, what is this, this great civilization done for us? What has it done for us? I remember what I did in my last show. And I said, now how, is, how does he have a great civilization that has homeless people living on the street? I mean, that's what you're boasting about? So that's what Pat Buchanan's going to say. Well, didn't, they, didn't we do great things for these people? Sure, we murdered them. But the ones we didn't murder, we gave them a Bible. We, we taught them to speak a, a different language. Abandon your, your, your pagan tongue. We taught them to speak English. Taught them to speak Spanish. And then we persecuted them for the next 500 years. And we still persecute them. We persecute the, persecute the black man. I mean, Donald Trump is likening all these, these folks who, who are, are really, and, and why are they coming to the United States? Is it because it's a great civilization? No, because it is the civilization, it is the, it is the country that is imposing poverty every place else. It is the country that lives affluently off of other countries. So why wouldn't you want, if you can't fight it in your own country, because the only means, way, you know, to, to make, make a living is to, is to kind of beat the corrupt system that the United States has left you with. If your alternative is, well, let's go to where the affluence is. Let's go to the country that is living afflu affluently off of the spoils of our, of our people. That's why you have people coming, coming to the United States. Do you think people want to come here to be the, become the victims of racism? Really? I mean, look, you don't have to just be a black comic who would say over and over and over again, if you think being black has its advantages, if you think being native has some advantages in your game, no, it has no advantages in your game. The only thing, the only benefit to being native is being able to say, that's not ours. That I'm stripping some of that off of me. I'm stripping off the church. I'm tri uh, stripping off the, you know, the, the, the army uniform. I'm grabbing back my language. I'm going to do the things on, on, on our land and, and with other like-minded Native people in terms of economic development. I'm, I'm not being a part of what, you, what you're doing. We're going to do something different. We're going to do something that's distinct and that is ours. But you better take your hands off of us. We're not asking you to give us anything. I'm not demanding reparations. I'm not demanding an apology. You guys are good at saying you're sorry, but I always like that. I'm sorry if I offended you. You ever? I was you know, Joe, uh, Joe Biden. Oh, I'm sorry if my touchy feely uh, you know, overstepped a bound. He didn't say. He doesn't say. I'm sorry I overstepped a bound. He doesn't say. I'm sorry I made you uncomfortable. He, he, he says. I'm sorry if you were uncomfortable. So. I'm sorry if you felt the way. I'm not sorry for my actions. I'm not sorry uh, for the, the things that we've done to, to you. We're just sorry if you're offended by the things that we did to you. I mean, how bizarre is that? And that's not even an apology. And one, of the, one of my colleagues says, hey, don't ever say you're sorry to people when you're, uh, when you, when you, you're going to talk about racism. Because I, I said, I'm sorry, folks. I got to bring it up again. It wasn't a sincere apology. I wasn't really sorry. You're sorry, not sorry, right? That's I wasn't really meaning I'm sorry. It's that same kind of sorry because I'll I'll do the play on words too. Because I'm not asking for forgiveness. I I think some people got to check up a little bit, and there comes a time that that you gotta you you gotta say, look, what you are living today is a benefit that came out of past racism. And current racism. I mean, think about it. The governor of the state of New York is trying to squeeze a billion dollars going forward from the Senecas. So we're not talking about taking land 100 years ago or 200 years ago or, you know, or, you know taking our children and putting them in residence. No, we're not talking about that anymore. We're talking about what's still being, uh, that they're still stealing today. I mean, there are textbooks that are lying, just like Pat Buchanan is lying. Every single day, we have kids that are, that, that are being raised in public school that are being lied to every single day. My grandson says, yeah, they were teaching us about the Trail of Tears. 
the trail, singular, like there was one, then they didn't really teach you about it. They, they marginalized it. They narrowed it. And you know what they do? They say, yeah, but it's all better now. We've made up for it. James Lowen, lies my teacher told me. He says, every, every story in, in these American history books say, yes, this was a bad time, but then we, we persevered and it's all better now. Yes, we had slaves, but then we freed them. <laughs> and then, then you live Jim Crow for, for another 100 years. I mean, come on. Some things have not ever been fixed, folks. And why? Because you can't fix a system when you have one people that maintain control on every level, with, with, with financially, in, in the, the legal system, in the entertainment and media uh, industry, in governance, in police forces, every decision, every you know, every institution and industry has white people leading it. And and, and look, it's, it's not it's not bad just because they're white. But what are they protecting? What are they afraid of? That's that white fragility, folks. And, you know, that's what Pat Buchanan advocates. He, he talks about, you know, somehow the, that white people are suffering, uh, 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 are suffering a genocide. Literally, he says that. Yeah, he's a, he's a Holocaust denier. He's all these other things. But you know what? Why is the Jamestown paper in western New York printing his garbage? And, and look, and look I, I heard people were, were pissed. I heard some of the Native people, especially, you know, because, again, Jamestown is fairly close to Allegheny. Some of the folks down there were pissed, and rightfully so. I'll, you know, I'll probably going to write a response. I'm not going to send it to, to, to Pat Buchanan. I don't care about Pat Buchanan. But I'm going to write a harsh response to the Jamestown paper. Say, why are you printing this trash? And you want to answer the, want me to answer those questions? I'll answer them. I'll answer every single one of the questions that, uh, uh, that Pat Buchanan asked. Because when you want to know why is genocide a crime against humanity, and again, he didn't say genocide. He said cultural genocide. Where have I heard that before? Cultural genocide. You know where I heard it first? When I heard Murray Sinclair uh, from, from, on the Canadian side, native guy, <laughs> a parliamentarian, who issued a report on the residential schools, and he called the residential schools not genocide, but cultural genocide. And I heard people clapping their hands. Yay! He finally said the word genocide. He called uh, he he called uh, residential schools genocide. No, he didn't. He put a word in front of it. He called it cultural genocide. As if in those residential schools they wouldn't what let us do our culture. No, that's not what they didn't stop us from doing bead work. Yeah, they stripped the language away. They did more than just than strip a culture away. They Killed the Indian to save the man. That's that was their their motto. That was their slogan. That was their that was their goal. And kill they did. They killed our people as children in those schools. They murdered them. They raped them. They they sterilized them. They they literally took took women and took away their right to give birth. Stole it. Stole it from them. That's what took place. in the, It wasn't cultural genocide. There's no such thing as cultural genocide. Stripping away a culture so people cease to exist is one of the conditions that is considered genocide. But to suggest what the Spanish did was cultural genocide? To suggest what the British did and what the French did and what Americans did? Was cultural genocide? You think it was cultural genocide that played out in Sand Creek? You think it was cultural genocide that had 38 Lakota swinging by the neck at the hand of, of Abraham Lincoln? It wasn't culture that died on those fields. It wasn't culture that died on those gallows. It was human beings. So, what you got to ask yourself, as Native people, we, what we got to ask ourselves, are, are, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to speak out against this stuff? And you as white people, 
who might feel like, oh, that's a little harsh. I think this John Cain is always calling down white people. No, I'm, I'm calling you up. I'm not calling you down. I'm calling you up. Because it's on you to correct a Pat Buchanan. It's on you to tell the Jamestown paper. You think white, you think us telling the Jamestown paper running his garbage is, uh, is going to stop them? You think us calling out? No. White people, you got to say, look, that's inappropriate. You don't need to have that guy's column in this paper. I, I subscribe to this paper. I'm not going to keep. Look, white people, we need you. I'm calling you up, not calling you down. It's on you to hold some of your people in check. It's on you. All right, folks, that's my, that's my show. All right, we'll be back here on, uh, on Tuesday, and uh, we'll find something else to make a bunch of noise over. <laughs> Until then, this is John Kane. This is Let's Talk Native. We'll see you then. Yowie. So calm to me But love in the water It's calm so naturally It's a gift from my mother You can't deny The day we lose it is a day That's the day we die Since his death, it should have never been.